it last night. Hello, class. So today I want to really quickly uh, start off by recapping the lab you guys did on Friday. So on Friday's lab, you were experimenting with several different things to try to figure out uh, what affected how much uh, EMF there was in the system. We'll get back to that in a second. Uh, and that's called Faraday's Law. So the first thing I just wanted to recap is just what uh, EMF is. So electromotive force is basically the amount of voltage induced in a system by using Faraday's Law. Okay, by using Faraday's Law. And uh, it's called EMF, it's um, electromotive force. It's basically what's caused to exist in a circuit that did not exist already. So the difference between this and say a battery is the battery day has separated charge. This does not have separated charge. It's caused by a change in magnetic field through a coil of wire. Okay, uh, the second thing is uh, magnetic flux is the amount of magnetic field going through uh, a coil of wire. And that is kind of the big factor uh, in what we're doing here. And you'll see that here in just a second. Okay, so uh, I have the equation up here on the board. We'll talk more about this in a second, uh, in the second video where I talk about how to actually solve this sucker. But just a couple of things I wanted to point out from the lab just to make sure that you were good on those. I saw most of these things on the labs when I was checking them over the weekend, but uh, a couple of things I wanted to point out too. So the first one is, uh, the speed matters and that's how much that affects the flux so how quickly you move the magnet in or out affects how much field goes in or out. Uh, the direction of the magnet whether it's north pole or south pole that you insert or pull out uh, that's going to be something called Lenz's Law which we'll get to on Wednesday so don't worry about it just yet uh, but it does matter. The number of coils is going to affect how much field can go through the loop of wires, so that obviously matters. Uh, the one thing that you could not see in the lab uh, that also matters is the shape of the uh, loop. So these were all circular uh, coils of wire, but they don't have to be circular coils of wire. They could be other things too. Um, square is the other one we'll use at times. Is that yummy, Sarah? Yeah. Go back to Angular. Yeah, they could be rectangles, but we usually don't do rectangles because it gets kind of funky. Oh. Usually just, yep, you can do ovals too. We just do circles and squares. Diamonds? I suppose, yeah, if you wanted to. Hearts? Should we do heart-shaped wires? Mm, Star-shaped so. wires? Star, oh my gosh, you guys are just making things more complicated. Um, and then the last thing you guys were checking on is, is it direct or inversely proportional? Um, the number of uh, loops is directly proportional. The more loops you have, the more oh EMF God. is induced. And the, all the things that affect flux, so uh, speed and direction and whether it's in or out, all that stuff, that is all uh, directly proportional. Okay? Uh, we'll get to the things that are inversely proportional. Really, it's just one thing, and that's time, and that's just how quickly you do it. Um, you'll notice up here the one thing that I did mention that, again, was not in the lab is the area uh, because it was just one set of loops and one size of loops. Okay, uh, next video you're going to watch is going to be how to actually solve this.